Hello everybody, welcome here. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Caddisfly Emerger Phase 2. As in many of my videos, I blend the old with the new. I'm going to be taking Dave Elliott's 1984 Salmon Candy Series Caddisfly Emerger and fusing it with the materials we have on the fly market today. So let's take a look at the Caddisfly Emerger Phase 2. Welcome to my fly bench. In today's video we look at the Caddisfly Emerger Phase 2. If you wish to see Phase 1, click the link in the upper right corner and then you can return to this video. The Caddisfly Emerger in its second phase has some distinct elements that we need to include in our flies. Let's take a look at the insect for a moment. As the pupa floats in the surface film, its husk begins to split along the back. The adult insect is trying to propel itself up and forward out of that husk. We have some wings showing and the legs are struggling on the surface film trying to free itself from that husk. These are all important elements so let's take a look at the materials you're going to need to tie this fly. If you like this video please tap that subscribe button on the bottom right of your screen. Thank you. Into my vise I have a Togans number 10 2X long curved nymph hook. To that I have attached my 70 denier light olive tying thread right in about mid shank there. Our first order of business is to attach our tail and that's going to be of the uh, Superfly Great Canadian Dubbing Diamond Dub. It's a holographic chartreuse and this is a long fiber dubbing. Um, so we can make a tail of it, we can make a noodle by hand and grab a bunch of it and we'll twist it together and uh, create a bit of a noodle. And this noodle will form our tail. And uh, I'm folding it in half there and twisting it again to get a little bit of volume there. And then we've got that noodle there, we're going to attach it as a tail. I like it about a body's length or so, uh, the hook length back and we'll zip that on there right to the bend well the bend of the hook here this dubbing is to represent the husk that's trailing behind the fly as the the insect adult is not yet completely extracted from it and still attached to it and that husk should, when it's wet should dip below the water surface as the the hook breaks the uh, surface film and wiggle and wave down there as a loose husk would. Now we are creating a dubbing loop with our loop tool and it doesn't have to be terribly long, three inches or so, two to three inches and we'll bring our thread forward to about the halfway point of the hook. Not much further, maybe a one wrap of thread past the mid midpoint. Uh, our next material is a blend of a flat olive ultra translucent dubbing material and this is a short fiber dubbing material and then we're going to mix it with the long fiber holographic chartreuse to create a blend because I want a transition of color moving up the hook and we'll take some of that material that I've previously blended here and stick it in our dubbing loop just find my dubbing loop in this light, there we go, and stick some of that dubbing in there, slide it up between the two threads that we formed in our loop, the two sides, and a little bit more, and then spread it out a little bit, and we begin twisting our dubbing loop. Now one trick I learned quite a while ago is every now and then slacken the tension on your dubbing loop and twist while you're doing that and then tighten up again and as you're doing so you can spread that dubbing out and even it out a little bit so you get a more evenly shaped 
noodle. It's not in big clusters in some areas and non-existent in others. And you can create a more consistent noodle with your twisting method. And there we go. We've got a nice consistent noodle there now. So now we begin wrapping our noodle forward. This represents the body that is still partially in the husk and uh, not fully free of it yet. And is, thus it has still that sparkle in it. So we get it up to the thread there, just at the halfway point. We want to leave ourselves enough room at the head for the things we need to put in there. And uh, we'll be putting in a hackle and then some wings and then the rest of the dubbing. So we're going to cut that off. And our next item of business is to bring in our hackle to represent the legs that are now free of the husk and working vigorously to pull the adult out of the remaining husk. You could, if you watch these up close, you ever see it and observe it really close, you'll see that insect is mostly working with its legs, trying to get a purchase on the, on the surface film to pull the rest of the body out. And those legs can be quite active. So a, a good number of hackles spun on there can represent the busyness of those legs trying to, to work its way free. So I'm using furnace hackle here, but you could go with just straight brown or a black. Um, I like the furnace hackle. It gives that, it's a beautiful color. And we'll give that two or three turns. Two, and I like one more, three. And to uh, tie off the hackle is generally my practice to take my feather tip in the hackle pliers and leaving the bobbin hang free, I will move that uh, tip of the hackle in a counterclockwise circle around the thread. Then I bring the thread over the hook once and I repeat that two more times. Around the thread, then the thread over the fly. And around the thread, and the thread over the fly. Now that's properly secured in there and we haven't tagged down too many of those hackle fibers that we just spun on there. Now I will wet my fingertips of my left hand and push the top fibers down as much as I can and give a wrap of the thread. We're trying to get those hackle fibers to mostly be pointed to the side and down. And we don't have to worry if we don't get all of them. Um, as long as we've got some of them and we've sort of oriented them in that direction, it'll be fine. Our wing comes in next, deer hair. Uh, it doesn't have to be too big a clump. And I'll cut off my deer hair and then pull out the fuzz and lint from the bottom of the stems there of the hair. And uh, we'll stack, put that in a stacker and slip it in them in tips first. Pop those down in there. And then we give it a series of taps to align the tips. We slowly extract the sleeve and our tips are now aligned. Pull those out of there. And for length of a wing, I like to go somewhere between the bend of the hook and the end of the tail. It doesn't have to be very, very long, but something longer than the bend. And as soon as I get it where I want, now I'll switch to my left hand and pinch that on there. We'll give it a loose loop, a second loose loop, then tighten down. And now we begin to wrap it on there tightly with a half a dozen to eight turns to secure it in place. And we'll pull all these tag ends back because we're going to need them and put a couple of wraps in front. Now note that there's somewhat a, a V here between the actual wing tips and the tag ends. And we are going to fill that. So um, we're going to use that, that gap to fill in the body. Now I'll take some of this straight flat dubbing. And to create a very thin noodle, I will take some dubbing wax. And in the tin, I will wipe the tip of my finger and my thumb, treat the thread by rubbing it back and forth on there, and then slowly spin on a very thin, small noodle of the flat dubbing, flat olive dubbing. And this will represent the body that is now totally free of the husk. It'll have a flatter color and appearance to fish below the surface. And it's dry. And then we'll just get that noodle made on there. 
and then we'll wrap one wrap of our noodle. Let's get that spun on there properly. We have to go in one direction with these kind of noodles. One wrap in the V. Now bring our tackle, our tag ends forward and continue wrapping that dubbing up for a head. Got a very nice thin noodle there. Not too much, it's just going to cover that front of the hook. Now I'm going to pull the, the excess dubbing off of there. And we now pull the tag ends of the deer hair forward to form a shell back. And give that a couple of wraps just behind the eye of the hook to catch them in there. There we go. Cinch that up tight. Now I like to put a wrap or two just in front of that hair to sort of cock it up. And I've got some errant strands here. You just pluck on any errant strands you've got off. Now we're going to give this a little bit of a haircut, but we don't want to cut off all those tag ends. We want to leave about an eye's length or so beyond. So I'm just going to give those a bit of a haircut and trim them to shape. I don't want them too long, but I still want them there. Cut off any of the messy ends that I don't like. And just sort of shape that head slowly as I want to tidy up. Probably being a little fussy here, but that's just me. And looking for some loose ends there to pull away. There we go. Now we'll give the uh, thread a touch of brushable super glue. And we're going to finish this head behind that tuft of hair, not in front. Wrap that glue in there to secure everything in place and give it a whip finish. And we have completed our caddis emerger in its second phase. This is to represent the caddis as it's partially freed from the husk but not yet complete. The curved hook and the translucent dubbing tail should dip below the surface. You can treat the front of this fly with grease or floatant to help it stay buoyant so it'll last through more than a few casts. And this tail end should dip below the surface, very realistically representing an insect that's partially clear of its husk. This should catch you more than a few fish. Good luck out there. Thank you for watching.